Hello, my friends. Welcome to another exciting episode in our Photoshop design series. In this video, I'm going to show you how I was able to create this nice club flyer inside of Photoshop. If you're not looking at your smart design and premium assets, now is the best time to get yours. This consists of PNG, free images, backgrounds, templates via flyer templates, and 3D effects, right? And also, you have your PSD flyers. Just click the link in the description of this video. If you're not subscribed, now is the best time to hit the subscribe button. Without having to say much, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to file. I'm going to click on new like this. I'm going to set my size. I'm using inches 4 by 5 I'm going to impute the name here. So it's going to be Club Flyer. Resolution 300, RGB transparent and click on create like this. And it brings you inside of the Photoshop interface. Right? So the first thing you need to do is go over to your resource file. The link to download all of this resource file is in the description of this video. Alongside many other good things in the description of the video. So do not miss it. So I'm just going to sample the color. This color. So you can copy the color code. For the foreground and the background, I'm going to use this lighter color. Lighter shade of green. Good. So I'm just going to make this one bigger. Click enter, duplicate it, control J, and I'm going to make this one small. Yeah, just like this. Okay. So as it stands now, I'm going to hide the one on top. The one under, I'm going to go to filter, blow, and I'm going to apply caution blow. I'm going to use this radius, click OK like this. Turn on this one. And um, a couple of things I want to do here so that I can have a balanced flyer, right? Or a balanced poster. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure I have where my text would stay. So I'm just going to bring this in. I know it looks chaotic, so I'm just going to bring this in. And um, click enter, drag it up. It should be on top of this so i'm just gonna have this here like this and um, click on the mask to mask it and um, go over to your brush b for brush select the brush here and make sure your cap lock is turned off increase the size of your brush and get rid of the tip make sure your foreground color is set to black conceal this part here onto your left with this make sure your flow is set to 100 and of course, let me bring this down. You can see that you have your nice blend. Now, this is the best way to blend any image. Duplicate this, and I'm going to have this here. Like this. So, the same image, I'm going to conceal the edges. This one here. So, select your brush. B for brush. So make sure you are working on the mask, select the brush, and of course, conceal this area like this. Duplicate this one again, Ctrl J. And uh, Ctrl T, flip it horizontal and take it to this part here. Make sure you are not covering the face in any way, very important. So click on the mask the same way, let's get rid of this hard edge here can see it's gone so select three of them group them ctrl g and convert them to smart object like this then we're gonna add the blur and gaussian blur to this increase the radius until you have something like this this is too much right so this is good though this is too much I think somewhere around here should do the trick. So click OK. And this is what you should have. You can see that you have a nice blend of lights. Right? And of course it has covered the lower region of the image. So this is before and after. So you can move this downwards just slightly like this. And you're good to go. So let's move on. Bring on this image. 
was simply dragging and dropping inside here like this. And of course, this image is quite complicated, but that's the reason why we're using it. So what you need to do here is very, very simple with this image. Click enter when you're done. Select your mask and with your brush selected, remove the add edge on top and divide the image like this. So every other thing can be on the side, but you don't have anything in the middle. Reduce your opacity like this and then you're good to go. You can always make adjustment to it based on your preference. Click on solid color and this is the color code you should use, color of the foreground. Select the mask and with your brush selected, you want to do stuff like this so that you can only have this at the base or you can make your brush bigger, Ctrl Z and just make sure you are doing it the right way. So you leave areas, dark areas at the base. So you can make your brush bigger and then just click once and that's all. All right, easy peasy. So you want to bring this down a little bit so it's not so much. And there you have it nicely done. So go over to your text tool like this. And of course, we use this. You want to reduce this. And I'm just going to type something simple. It's going to be green. Move it to the position you want it to be. Ctrl T, make it bigger. Like this. Make it bigger. Click enter when you're done. And uh, double click on the color and uh, select whites. Click OK. The next thing you want to do is you want to duplicate this green. So Ctrl J to make a duplicate or hold down the Alt key while you drag this down. And there should be a overlap. So double click and this is just going to be green house. Alright, you need this overlap here. Alright, so it shouldn't be something like this. Reduce it just a bit. Click enter. And move this upward. Like this. So double click or better still right click and select blending option and uh, click on drop shadow and copy my settings here. And click OK when you're done. So this is good. Now um, I'm going to add an extra layer of effect to this house text. Right. But first I'm going to change the color. I'm going to use something like this. A lighter shade of the green. And I'm just going to click OK here. So what I'm going to do next is very, very easy. Create a new layer and um, create clipping mask. So this layer serves as a clipping mask. Um, remove the stroke and of course the field should be white make sure you're using your pen tool Oop. okay ctrl z this is not the pen tool my bad so go back and select the pen tool like this and uh, what you need to do is drag like this, drag, drag, drag until you have a creative shape like this. Okay, so you have something like this. You can see how nice this is. So, greenhouse.
So selecting the green, right click blending option and we want to add a little bit of glow to this. So come here and select outer glow. Should be somewhere around here. Okay, found it. Click on it and this should be your settings. So when you're done, click OK like this and you're good to go. So you can select all the text and uh, rename this main text. You can move this upward just the way you want it. And um, like I said, you're good to go. Go over to your text too, and you can type something else. This is going to be party. And double click, change the color. I'm using white. Click OK. And uh, Ctrl C, make this smaller. And I can come here and um, impute 3000 as a figure. And I have it here. So simple as that. So double click on this, select this color here and click OK and uh, go over to Blur, Gaussian Blur. Yes, convert to Smart Objects and um, use this value to light up the text. So this is the fastest way to light up any text inside of Photoshop. Right, so what you want to do here is very, very simple. So let's move on with the rest of the design. So go over to your rectangle tool draw a rectangle here and um, of course you have your shape here but let's modify this shape go over to your pen tool and um, create a point here and create a point here now we need to extract one particular point so how do we do this very simple go over to your direct selection tool so with our direct selection tool, we would remove one of the nodes. So this is direct selection tool here. Click on it. Click on this node here and press delete on your keyboard. And boom. We've gotten rid of that. So we can now successfully change the color of this. So make sure if it has a stroke, make sure you remove it. Set it to non-stroke and uh, you're good to go. So double click on the thumbnail and um, select the dark color like this and click OK. So I'm just going to introduce my text and I'm just going to type something very, very simple. First and foremost, make sure you turn this back to default. So basically, it's just going to be 1st of January. Okay, so you have that in place. Ctrl J and this one on top, I'm going to make it white. So the one on the bottom, select the two of them. That's the green. Group them and convert to smart objects. Filter, blow, gush and blow to create a nice light effect and click OK when you're done. Okay, so we have our dates. We have um, the image ready. So let's go get the address and everything. So this is perfect. I can make it bigger just a little bit. And um, we're good to go, like I said. So I'm going over to my resource file to bring in the address. I take time to type all of this so that we don't spend the whole time trying to design this. So I have this in place and um, I'm just going to move it into position and click enter when I'm done. So as you can see, we're almost done with this.
almost done with this now you can group your layers so that you understand them well and of course everything is in order inside of your designing software i'm just going to reduce increase this a bit so that i can more visible increase it a bit and um, until you have something like this So select the image, go to filter, go to camera roll, and um, of course we forgot to make it pop. So let's go and um, apply some tints, move towards the greens because the image is tough and everything about the image is all about green. Increase the texture like this and click OK and you can see we have a more popped image compared to how it was before. If you've liked this video, if you've gained something valuable from this video and if you've gotten to this point with me, make sure you don't forget to subscribe hit the subscribe button and don't forget to share my videos drop a comment in the comment section and um, comment what you want to see me create in the next video i'll see you ciao